Welcome back to the Code Wolf. Today we're going to jump right in and talk about how to deploy and host a remote MCP server. Now, if you're watching this video, I am going to assume you have at least a very basic working knowledge of MCP servers and essential concepts, as well as familiarity with container workflows, so some Docker knowledge and how to build uh, or push up containers and things like that. So I decided to make this video uh, based partially on user comments, but also because it seems like the vast majority of MCP content out there right now is focused on just the local scenario. So if we look at this useful diagram from the Microsoft Docs, it seems like most people are talking about sort of this local development circuit where I'm building an MCP server on my computer and I'm just running it in VS Code and trying stuff out. Or the MCP server is available as a NuGet package or an NPM package and that gets pulled down onto your computer and it still runs locally as sort of a sub process with VS Code or your own client app and so on. But all of this is ignoring a really common and powerful approach that you can use in the real world, which is to use a remote MCP server. And so over here on the right, we have this internet box. So instead of just your computer, there's internet and remote. And honestly, in a lot of cases, remote could just be bundled with internet. Uh, but these would be MCP servers where the MCP server itself is running on a different computer. And that computer could be somewhere else, maybe on your company network, or it could be out in the cloud hosted on the public internet. And so this remote MCP server concept just applies to any scenario where you're not actually running the MCP server code itself uh, in a local process, whether that's your local development or an app running on one of your servers and so on. So let's look more closely at this example. So this is an MCP server that I built in a previous video, and you don't need to watch that video for this to make sense. But this project mirrors a lot of what you might see out there, where we have a basic console app, and so we're using our host builder to set that up, and then we call add MCP server. So I'll zoom in here, and it says this will add the MCP server to the service collection with default options, that's great. But this next part is the really important point that we're interested in. So we have this call to with standard IO server transport. And if you look at this carefully, it says this method configures the server to communicate using standard IO, which is commonly used when the model context protocol server is launched locally by a client process. And so local here just means that the client app itself is starting up the MCP server, whether it retrieved that code locally on your computer or it pulled down a NuGet package that had the MCP server packaged up inside of it or so on. But the client is starting the MCP server process. And so if we look at our mcp.json config file, this is where we can set up how MCP servers start up in VS Code. And I have two examples here. So the first one is our CodeWolf MCP server. So this is the local application code that we have over here. So this has a couple tools uh, configured for a random number and an RSS feed. And when we press start here, VS Code is actually launching that project using this .NET run command. So you can see now it's running. And so over in our chat window, if you were to say get me a random number, then it's going to say that it wants to run this get random number method on our CodeWolf MCP server. So that's this method right here. So I'm going to say continue and there's our random number. So in this case, VS Code just started up our project and now it's using that as an MCP server. So that's one example. I'll just stop that for now. And the other example of this standard IO would be something like the Azure MCP server. So this is actually available as an NPM package. So we'd run the NPX command for the Azure MCP package and then we just call uh, start on that and we're again using standard IO. So this is actually just gonna pull the package down and run that as an MCP server. So if we look at our tools here, you can see that the Azure MCP server is listed here. So both of these scenarios will work with standard IO because the MCP server is running in a process that our client app uh, can consume it from. But what if we want our MCP server to be available out on the internet for anyone to consume, and we don't want to provide that through some sort of NuGet package download we just want it to be able to be reached over HTTP, uh, sort of similar to how a web API would. So I've switched over to a new project for this video that is set up to work as a remote MCP server. And so I just created this with the .NET new web command. And this is a pretty basic app that just provides some info about the CodeWolf channel. So you can see there's two tools here. So there's 
get video view counts and get recent videos, and you can pass in how many results you want to bring back. But I just exported some data from YouTube, and this will parse out that data and provide uh, information back. So maybe I want to make this publicly available on the web so that people could look up information about the Code Wolf channel if they really wanted to. And I've included that CSV data in the project, so that always gets bundled along with it. But if we go back to our program file, the most important part of this is this with HTTP transport method. So if you remember in the previous project, it was using that with standard IO server transport. Well, this uses the HTTP option. And this essentially allows you to communicate with this as an MCP server over HTTP. And it's worth noting, to get access to this method, you will need to add the model context protocol.aspnet core package. And that gives us access uh, to setting this up as a web project and this HTTP transport method. It also gives us this map MCP method. So if we mouse over that, it says it sets up endpoints for handling MCP streamable HTTP transport. So if you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, you might remember methods uh, like map endpoints and so on that, that kind of wire up uh, those endpoints over HTTP so you can reach them through a browser. Well, this is sort of similar where it's enabling MCP server tool functionality over HTTP and just handling some of those default configurations for us in the background. Now, the last part here is this app.run. And in this case, I've configured this 0.0.0.0 uh, address here because we're going to be using this as a container with the Docker. And I'm using port 3001 here. But that means that we could start this up as a container. And that container can run on its own. And we can access this as an MCP server from any client. So the last part of this is if we go over to our MCP.json, note that this time we're not specifying a command to run. So if I open up our previous project for a second, remember we were calling this .NET run project or this npx server start. We were actually starting up code, whereas now we're just pointing to a URL. And in this case, right now that's a local URL, so we're gonna run this container locally, but we could also deploy this out to Azure, as we'll see in a moment, and just point to an Azure URL for a truly remote MCP server. So first let's test this locally. And to create a uh, Docker image here, I'm gonna say Docker build, and I'll tag this as CodeWolf MCP, and just specify this uh, current root directory here. And I'll let that build for a second. So, so there we have it, our container built. And so if I bring up Docker desktop here, just so we can see what's going on. So now under images, we've got this CodeWolf MCP. And so I'll click on that and then we can say run, and I'm gonna provide some optional settings here. So I'll call this CodeWolf MCP again. And for the port, uh, let's just stick with 3001 for a minute here and run that. So now our MCP server is running as a container. And so now we can click Start here. And this is gonna to connect to that container. So now in over, over in our Copilot, I'll say hello. And I'm gonna say, get me the last three videos published on the Code Wolf. And you can see right away, it wants to run our Code Wolf local container MCP server, the get recent videos method of that. So over here, uh, we have get recent videos with a count, so our count is three. So I'll say continue, and there we have it. There's our three latest videos that were extracted from our CSV data by the MCP server that's running in our container. And as a side note, I just want to show in the logs here that you can see where those tools are being called in Docker, just to show that that is being accessed uh, through our Copilot. So that's really cool. We can also verify that those tools are wired up by clicking on this Tools button again. And if we scroll down here, we can look for our MCP server. So there it is. There's our CodeWolf MCP local container with our two tools. So that's another way to verify that this is wired up correctly. Okay, so now let's see how to take our local container image and push that up to a registry and host that out in the cloud so that we can use this uh, with any app, essentially. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure and stop our application. So I'll just stop that container. And then let's go back to VS Code. And for this video, I'm gonna be hosting this out on Azure, but the high-level concepts would apply to any hosting service that can host containers. And I would recommend installing the Azure Tools Pack for this because it can make some of these things easy. I'm gonna be using a combination of this extension pack and the Azure Portal. I'm just picking whatever is easiest to visualize for this video and kind of walk you through. 
So next let's head over to the containers panel. And at the top here under images, you can see that our CodeWolf MCP image that we built earlier, that already popped in here, so the extension discovered that. And next we want to push that to a registry, which is the next section down here. Now I already have a CodeWolf registry for various things I do on this channel, but if you don't have one, you can just right click on the subscription of your choice and say create registry. And then you would just provide a name, so test code wolf or something. And then you would just pick your SKU and there's just a few questions to answer here. And then after you confirm, it'll create that for you. But I already have one, so that's good to go. So now in our images, we can click on that and choose this latest tag and say push. And then it's gonna ask us to pick a registry provider. So that would be the ones down here. And I'll pick Azure and choose that subscription. So there's our Code Wolf registry. And then it's going to re-tag this uh, for Azure for that, for that registry. So I'll hit enter. And now you can see it's already pushing that up for us. So that's gonna be out there in Azure. I really like this way of pushing containers. I think it's one of the easiest options within VS Code. So we'll give that a second to finish. And then we're actually gonna jump over into the Azure portal uh, to create our container app and provision this uh, image with it. All right, so over in the Azure portal, let's create a container app to host our container. And you can get to this screen by just searching for container apps and clicking on that. And just make sure you have the subscription selected that you want. And then let's give this a name. So I'll call this CodeWolf MCP server. That'll be our app name. And for the deployment source, make sure to pick container image. So it says bring your own registry or build a container from a Docker file. This is the one that we want. And then further down, just pick your region. I'm also gonna create a new environment just to make sure that we're starting fresh here. So I'll call this CodeWolf MCP server ENV and then click create. So on this container tab, I'm gonna give this container a name of CodeWolf MCP server. And then I'm gonna pick the Azure container registry. So that's where we pushed it up to a minute ago. And make sure you pick the right subscription. And then for our registry, I'm going to pick our CodeWolf registry. And the image will be our CodeWolf MCP image, of course. And we want the latest tag on that. The rest of these settings uh, we can mostly ignore. I will select .NET as the stack. And I'm also going to just boost up the specs a little bit here to two CPU cores and four gigs of memory so it runs a little better. But you can put whatever makes sense here for your resourcing. And then let's click next to go to the ingress settings. And this page is actually really important. So this is what's going to allow our MCP server to be publicly available. So I'm gonna click enabled. And we're gonna say accepting traffic from anywhere. And the ingress type will be HTTP. Obviously you're going to want to consider all these settings for your own security and network requirements, but this is what we're going with for now. And the last thing that we really care about here is this target port. So if we mouse over this information icon, it says this is the port your container is listening on that will receive traffic. Set this value to the port number that your container uses. So for us, this was 3001. If you don't set this, it won't work right. Again, in our configuration here, it was 3001. So this is a common thing that trips people up. Just make sure you enable ingress, traffic from anywhere, 3001 for the purposes of this demo. So I'm gonna say review and create, and then let's go ahead and create that. And this can take a few minutes, so I'll pause and let this finish and come back when it completes. All right, so that completed successfully, and then we can click go to resource. And then we wanna open up this application URL over on the right. So I'll just control click to open that. And at first it's gonna seem like we got an error, but this is actually an okay response for our purposes. It's just complaining that the session wasn't found, but that's not important for this demo. So the main thing we wanna do here is copy our URL, and then let's head back to our application, and we wanna open up our mcp.json file. Remember, this is where we configure our servers, and right now we just have a local container that's pointing to that container we had running. So let's add another server here, and we're gonna call this CodeWolf MCP Azure, just to differentiate that this is the one running out on the cloud. And then I'll just hit tab. But here is where we want to paste in the URL for the site that we just deployed. And of course we want to specify HTTP as the type still. And this will allow Copilot to connect to our MCP server that's running out in container apps. So over on the right, I'm gonna just right click and say new chat again to clear that out. 
And finally, we just want to hit this Start button to connect to that. Now I had to kind of save and close this file and reopen it to get that button to appear, so you might have to fiddle with that a little bit. But, but once it appears, just start up that connection. And then over in Copilot, we can also check our Tools button again to make sure that that popped in here. So let's just scroll through this list. And sure enough, there's our CodeWolf MCP Azure. So it was able to connect to our MCP server out there, and you can see it already discovered our two tools. And I'm actually going to disable this local one. Um, it's not actually running, but just to be extra sure, let's just cancel that out so that, that, so that those tools aren't available to our Copilot. Just the Azure version will be. So I'll click OK. And we can also double check that here. So this top container one still says start. So it's not connected, only our Azure one is connected. So now over here, we can say something like, get me uh, the latest 10 videos published on the Code Wolf. And look at that. It wants to run the get recent videos method on the Code Wolf MCP Azure server. So I'm going to click continue, and it should bring back the last 10 videos that were published. And this is all correct. So you can see this goes from July of 2025 all the way back to February. And so it's able to use our tools properly. And this is all connected out to our container app that's running in Azure and container apps. So we could try the other one here. So I could say, get me the top uh, videos for the Code Wolf, or maybe the top two videos for the Code Wolf. So this will return the top two videos with the highest view count for the year. Uh, so there it is. There's our get video view counts. And there we go. It prints out these two videos. So check those out if you haven't already. So hopefully you can see how powerful this is because now anyone else would be able to connect to this MCP server. And in this case, start learning all about the Code Wolf. But obviously you could expose way more functionality than just some information about a YouTube channel. Please hit those subscribe and like buttons if you enjoyed the content to support the channel, and I'll see you next time.